Greetings, I am Herbert Herbaderp, and today I'm going to play another solo game of Bolt Action. First of all, this game was played mostly for entertainment purposes. It's not a tutorial or a how-to video, so if you are looking for that you might be in the wrong place. I did take some notes from the previous solo game that I played, but I will almost certainly still be getting things wrong and just plain forgetting things. If you notice anything like that let me know in the comment section below. It was quite helpful last time. Second, I have house ruled extra tanks into my forces because I wanted to and my opponent didn't disagree. As you can see my table is fairly simple. I've used this grounded rail carriage and some bocage hedgerows that I built a billion years ago, my church ruins, roads, grocery store, hill cuttings and unpainted factory. I have videos relating to most of these scenery items, links in the description. The battle shall be a meeting engagement between Britain and Germany with forces of roughly 1500 points. Let's have a quick look at those forces. First, the British reinforced platoon. Everything in this platoon is a regular and it is led by First Lieutenant Mortimer who has two happy looking friends to help him out. Under his command we have two identical regular infantry sections consisting of an NCO with a submachine gun, one light machine gunner and seven infantry with rifles. The models in these squads are a mix of my commandos and regular British infantry, mostly because I wasn't paying enough attention and it doesn't really matter. I've also brought along a smaller five man section all armed with rifles. The reason I brought five men in this squad is so they will all fit into a universal carrier. I've also brought along a PR team because there's going to be a few tanks that might need to be dealt with. And because this is a British force I can bring along a free artillery forward observer which is nice. It looks like he could be Mortimer's brother. In addition to infantry there are of course some vehicles. I'm bringing two Bren gun carriers. These both have the pintle mounted LMG option for extra shooty fun times. Additional transport will be provided by this sadly unpainted M5 half track. This doesn't have any extra gun options, only the MG mounted on the ring there. And of course tanks. I wouldn't play a game of bolt action with no tanks, that would be silly. I have two regular Cromwells and one regular Churchill Mark 7. I believe the model is wrong for a Churchill 7 but that's what it is in the list. You'll just have to deal with it. The German force is a mostly veteran reinforced platoon made up of scary headless grey men. Like the Brits, the first lieutenant in charge has two friends with him. He's commanding three identical infantry squads consisting of an NCO with submachine gun, one light machine gunner and eight riflemen. I didn't have enough German figures to fill out all of these squads, so the third one are actually Russians. Maybe these are traitorous Russians now fighting for Germany or Germans committing a war crime by wearing Russian uniforms. Who knows for sure. The Germans also want some transport so they've got a pair of regular SDKFZ 251 slash one half tracks. One of which is a Rubicon model and the other a Warlord model. And of course like the British the Germans have three tanks. A Panzer 3G, Panther A in a sensible pink paint scheme and a Hetzer because I wanted to Hetz. Who wouldn't? All of these tanks are regulars. In addition to allowing myself to have two additional tanks I've made another house rule for this game. The tanks won't come on until the second turn. I just figured that might make things a little bit more interesting. Let the battle begin. Who will win? We may never know. Here's a little something that I thought might improve gameplay. Instead of pulling order dice out of a bag I've repurposed this bingo roller. I've marked the balls representing the British order dice with an X. I think doing this will make for some more randomness in the order selection. Some order dice are inconsistent. Some of the older order dice that I have are more squared than the ones I'm actually using in this game. You could conceivably cheat with mismatched dice and a bingo roller eliminates that. I do have a plan to improve upon this idea. I just need to find differently coloured balls, <laughs> balls in an appropriate size. The German commander decides to prove his bravery and runs onto the field to hide behind this hedgerow. This is just shy of 12 inches. He is of course joined by his two buddies. They can relax here for the time being because it's nice and quiet. I roll up another German ball and so the lieutenant calls out to an infantry squad and instructs them to also run up to the hedge to come and chill out and enjoy the view of the quiet town where surely nothing bad could possibly happen. The next ball is marked X for British. 
British starts with an X now, and so this half track comes on at a run, which is 18 inches. This is not coming onto the field empty of course, one of the larger infantry squads is aboard. The plan at the moment is to deploy that squad in cover here, but that will have to wait until another British order is pulled. You can see him just behind the factory, very sneaky. The Germans, they see nothing. The Germans go next and one of their half tracks comes roaring onto the field. I might have moved a tiny little bit too far, but my opponent never noticed. This is loaded with infantry. They've seen the British half-track and have cunningly taken cover from it behind the warehouse. Very tactical. Britain is up next. This Bren carrier enters the field. It is carrying my command team and an artillery observer in addition to Bren guns. I'm not exactly sure how far this is, but it's well within the 18 inches of run movement. It's using the church for cover before deploying its passengers. Germany gets a turn now and in an attempt to use the church as cover, I run this Hannah mag full of infantry up and onto the road here. It would seem they aren't yet aware of each other. There could be some fights here soon though. Brits go next and this PR team comes running on kind of carelessly into the open. The intent is to move around the corner and have a crack at that half track. These guys like to live life on the edge. The Germans have decided to leave their infantry inside of their half tracks and so there are no more German order dice left. I run this Bren carry with the five-man rifle squad inside to this gap in the hedge. It will potentially engage the half-track's passengers if they deploy. It's also acting as a kind of shield for the other infantry squad that's run up beside it. Tactical. And thus endeth turn one, with no shooting at all. Everyone has been busy trying to get into position. Now the tanks can come onto the table. Germany gets the first order of turn two. After pondering on what to do, I decide to deploy the infantry out of this half track. I run them all over behind this building which makes for a pretty nice hiding place. I've heard a good hiding place is important if you wish to avoid being shot. Germany gets another turn next and I felt the time was right to Hetz. I move the Hetzer on 9 inches behind the cover of this hill. Unfortunately because of the Hetzer's low profile, as much as it wants to, it can't shoot at the half track. Germany receives another turn next and the half track moves forward a little bit and intends to fire its machine gun at that Bren carrier. As I understand it the Hanamag's machine gun can't destroy the carrier, but it can pin it if it hits. I would say from this angle that the carrier has soft cover. That means a negative one to hit in addition to the negative one received for moving. And that means the Hanamag needs a five plus to hit. It gets six shots and not a single one hits. That's a bit disappointing, for the Germans at least anyway. Perhaps they've found some of that vodka that the Russian infantry are undoubtedly carrying. The Bren carrier chuckles like a smug little bastard. Yet another German ball is drawn. Will they have more luck this time? The Panzer III rumbles onto the table and after hearing a frustrated radio signal from an embarrassed half-track, tries to line up a shot on the Bren carrier. It's not exactly a good clear shot, but why not take it anyway? The same penalties apply as with the half track except this time the carrier could be destroyed. We need a roll of 5 or 6 in order to hit and as it so happens, a 4 is rolled. Maybe the German reputation for accurate weapons is undeserved. Or maybe that is the luckiest Bren carrier in the world. Britain finally gets a turn now and this Cromwell comes onto the board. He has a special surprise planned for that half track. There's no cover to worry about here, so the only penalty is for having moved. This means the Cromwell needs a 4 or higher to hit. And it works. We need to roll for damage now. We have a plus 1 bonus for shooting the Hanamag in the side, which when combined with the normal modifier of 5 plus for the medium anti-tank gun, means we only need a 1 to cause damage. Of course, more than that would be ideal. And the result is a 5 for a total of 11, which is of course much higher than the 7 plus damage value of the Hanamag. To determine the fate of the half track, I roll on the damage table. I roll a 5. On a 4, 5 or 6 the vehicle is knocked out, so boom, headshot. The wreckage is left in place and can become cover. The Cromwell smugly chuckles to himself. Eh eh eh. The British go again, and because that half track is no longer a threat, the Bren carrier, mildly annoyed at being shot at, moves over here behind this hill. He now has a little bit of cover. Germany next and they send the glorious Pink Panther onto the field right next to the Hetzer. I don't need to measure that because I know the Hetzer is sitting 9 inches onto the table. It looks like the Panther can see that M5 half track over there, though there is still that intervening hill that prevented the Hetzer from Hetzing. That, and having just moved, means the Panther gets two negative one penalties and needs a 5 plus to hit. 
I roll a 4, which is a miss. Bad shooting, Panther. I expected better of you. Germany goes again and the remaining Hanamag deposits its passengers here. They ran so they're not able to fire. The only target they really have anyway is that Bren carrier. Germany makes another move. This time the command team moves up between the two infantry squads. I put them there because I wanted them to be close enough to provide morale bonuses to said squads. Germany goes again for the fourth time. The half-track sees red and moves forward to fire his machine gun at that section of British infantry. Yet again, it's not a very clear shot, but it does look like he can see two men, and that's enough to shoot at. Again, movement and cover means that this is a 5 plus to hit with 6 shots, and not a single shot hits. Seriously? Really Germany? Really? Finally, Britain is able to make another move, and the Churchill tank comes trundling along onto the table and says, Hello chaps, what seems to be the trouble here then? Because the Churchill is so big and slow, it has the special rule, slow. This means it can only move 6 inches and run 12. Since I ran it onto the field, this is all it can do. In the next turn, it might be able to shoot at that half track, or the Panzer III. Britain goes again, and the PR team decides they might be just a little bit exposed there considering there are some scary tanks nearby, and so they run into the warehouse where they feel much safer. I didn't measure this precisely, but hey, my opponent is a knob and didn't notice. Britain goes again, and in an attempt at dealing with the German armour over the hill, the second Cromwell moves up and opens fire. I could shoot at either the Panther or the Hetzer. They both kind of have cover. I choose to shoot the Hetzer. We're just inside half range, so there's no penalty for that. With having moved and the enemy in cover, we need a 5 plus to hit and… nope. A 1 is certainly not a 5, or even close. I suspect this wouldn't have happened were this a painted model. Being a huge numpty, I didn't film it, but with the next British turn, I moved the M5 half-track around behind the warehouse. Britain was then selected again and so I deployed the infantry section out of that half track and into the street. And with them I want to shoot at those Germans over there. It looks to me as though only 4 of the 9 men will be able to fire at the enemy, but that's better than none. I measure the range and it's definitely at long range, so there's a penalty for that, movement, and I also gave them 1 for the enemy being in cover, which I decided was hard cover. Hills after all are usually pretty hard. Looking back I'm not sure that's quite right, because some of the models aren't in cover at all. At any rate that's how I played it and that means I needed 7s to hit, which would be impossible, but you can take 9 on impossible shots if you want. For this when you roll the dice, any 6s are rolled again and if you score a second 6, you hit. I've obviously failed to do so, but at least we gave it the good old college try. Next, the Brits deploy this forward artillery observer. I probably should have deployed him earlier really. He's chilling out up in this window, just looking out like a creep. British order again and the other Bren carrier unloads its passengers on top of this hill. Probably not the most sensible positioning, but it does allow for some good shooting down into those very naughty Germans. For this we need 4s to hit, the only penalty being for movement. I roll what I would consider to be an amazing roll. My opponent didn't care about the cocked die, so I didn't bother re-rolling that. Because the Germans are veterans, I need 5 plus to damage them. The Brits get lucky again and roll 2 6s and a 5. I think those 6s might have been exceptional damage, but I didn't bother with that. It just didn't seem so important in a solo game. I remove the three casualties and give them their pin marker. They don't seem especially happy to receive such a gift. Germany goes again next and this infantry squad jumps over the hedge and moves closer to their fearless leader. The camera here doesn't really show it, I couldn't get it low enough, but it didn't look to me as though they could hit the Brits on the hill across the road, so they didn't try. The way the Germans have been shooting so far, not shooting probably makes no difference anyway. Next, the British command team decides to dismount from their Bren carrier and hide behind this hedge. They heard the carrier crew mention going out to shoot at some Jerry's and felt it was a little too dangerous to go along. The Bren carrier goes into action next. It can make one pivot in its move, so I measure for that and then advance the carrier forward, pointing it at those menacing Germans. There's no way this shot can miss, and they're definitely in range, so we get 8 shots needing 4s to hit owing to that movement that we just did. And that's 4 hits. 50% isn't bad. Then the roll for killing is 5 plus because veterans. And I score 3 kills. Not bad at all. It would seem these regular Brits are better trained than the German veterans. 
I then take away the three casualties, set the pin marker to two, and then, because half of the squad was just killed by one unit, they need to take a morale test. Normally they would have a morale of 10, but since they have two pins, that value goes down to 8, which means I need to roll an 8 or lower for them to remain on the field. And I had to look it up, but 12 seems to be much higher than 8, so the remaining Germans run away. Those bullets were just too terrifying to deal with any longer. The final order die of the turn is British, and so I decided to run this infantry squad over the hedge and up near the Bren carrier. I'm not really sure if they're too close to friendly units or what. It didn't seem to be a big problem in a casual, friendly game with myself, so I just went with it. And that is the end of turn two. Things are certainly starting to get more interesting. The British have taken the centre of town. They probably plan to build tea shops there or something. The first order die of turn three goes to the British, and the Churchill rumbles forward a little bit, takes aim at the half-track and opens fire. It's definitely in range and there's no cover, so the only penalty is for movement and we need a 4 or better to hit. A 4 is rolled and therefore the shot hits. The Churchill has a medium anti-tank gun which has a 5 plus bonus, so we need at least a 2 to cause damage. I roll a 6 which makes 11 so he's clearly damaged, and rolling a 6 on the damage table means he's destroyed. Kaboom! The British go again, and the five-man infantry section decides being on top of a hill is a bad idea, and so they move down into the street next to that cutting. Next, the Germans have a go, and the mighty Pink Panther decides to rumble forward his nine inches and pivot to have a go at those British infantry. It looks like a reasonably clear shot. I'm not sure if it's quite right, but I gave the infantry hard cover for the building and wrecked Hanamag blocking the view. Thinking about it, maybe that's not quite the right way to do it. The two squads are quite close to each other, but I can't shoot at both, so I pick this one. I want to fire the machine guns, of which the Panther has three. Hull mounted, coaxial and pintle mounted, all of which get six shots each. I need six pluses to hit, and since I don't have 18 of these dice, I chose to roll six at a time. The first gun gets one hit, the second one gets one, and the third also gets one hit. Now we kill on four plus, and that's two British dead out of a possible 18 shots. Hmm. I remove two of the riflemen as casualties and then give them a pin marker. They do seem a little bit upset about it. The Germans don't seem to have noticed this Cromwell over here and it's more than happy to move forward, pivot and take a shot into the Panther's flank. This shot needs a 4 to hit because of movement and it hits. To score damage I need a 3 or better because we get a bonus for shooting into his side. I get a 4, which is nice, and then on the damage chart I roll a 6, which means this panther just got wrecked. Shocking. The panther's turret comes flying off to make it clear that it has been destroyed. Turns out unpainted models can fight just as well as painted ones. Seeing this happen, the Hetzer decides to avenge his fallen comrades the only way he knows how, by Hetzing. I am going to be generous here and say that this is a side shot. An actual opponent might argue that, but my opponent was really cool. The shot needs a 4 plus to hit and we hits ourselves a 6. Hetz's main gun has a modifier of 6 plus. We get plus 1 for shooting the side of the Cromwell, so we need to roll at least a 2 to get damage on the Cromwell with its 9 plus damage value. I roll a 5 and so I get to roll on the damage chart. I roll another 5 and that means the Cromwell has been destroyed. This is the first significant damage the Germans have done so far. I guess Hetz's gonna Hetz, and Hetzing is just too strong. It's Britain's turn next. I'm not sure if I need to use an order die to do this, but I decide to activate my artillery observer. I probably should have done this much sooner. I'm using this D12 as the aiming point for the artillery. I believe the way it works is that it won't fire until the start of the next turn, which means I have to try and remember it. The British get another order die and so this section of infantry, no longer fearing the Pink Panther, decide to move up to the corner of this building. I don't think they know about the German infantry squad on the other side of the building though. These are some aggressive Germans and it's Germany's turn next. This squad is within 12 inches of the British infantry so I figure I might as well assault them. The British have just moved, so I believe this means they cannot react. I'm not sure if I did this right at all, but I ran the Germans up and into contact with the British. If I understand this, for assault every hit is automatic and I only need to roll for damage. One die per model, so I do that. I need fours or better to do damage and I manage to get six, which means six Brits have died. 
Then the remaining three Brits are allowed to fight back as best they can, needing five to damage a veteran, and they claim one casualty. I think it's pretty clear the British have lost this assault, being most of them have died. So they're all removed from the table with no morale test, allowing the Germans to relax and spread out a bit. Their relaxation time doesn't last for long though. The British go next, and this Bren carrier turns and moves forward slightly in order to get a better shot at that murderous squad of Germans. I decided they didn't get cover because I can see most of the unit. I get 8 shots needing 4 plus to hit and only 2 miss, which I think is quite good. 5's to kill these veterans and 3 are dead. I don't know if they get a pin from the assault, but they definitely get one for that. I remove the 3 dead guys and then there are 6. The PR team who, inside their building, have been more or less surrounded by the action, decided to go over to this window and have a look at what's going on. They're lurking here with the hope that they might get to put that Hetzer's Hetzing days to an end. Germany goes next and the Panzer III moves up and takes a shot at the Churchill. It's a pretty clear shot into the side of the heavy tank. I didn't give the Churchill cover so a 4 is needed to hit and a 5 is rolled. Being a heavy tank the Churchill has a damage value of 11. With the modifier for shooting at the side armor we need a 5 to damage. The dice gods smile upon us and bless us with a 6. I roll a 3 on the vehicle damage chart which means the Churchill is on fire. Not exactly the ideal condition for a tank to be in. It now needs to pass a morale test, getting 9 or lower on 2 dice. The dice gods have begun to frown upon the Brits and a 12 is rolled so the Churchill is destroyed. Rip in piss Churchill, rip in piss. The Brits can go again and so this Bren carrier rushes over the hill and shoots at the German command team because that seems like a good idea. The Germans could react by going down because they've not made a move yet, but they choose to be all macho about it and don't go down. Firing 8 shots with both machine guns needing 4s to hit I score 5 hits. This is a withering hail of bullets. Needing a 5 up to kill I get more than enough and the entire command team is wiped out. Britain gets another turn and I want to move this squad over here but first I need to do a morale check. I roll a 4 which is less than the regular infantry's morale value of 9 and so it passes. It looks to me like all of these models are able to hit the enemy. So I now roll 5 for the rifles, 2 for the SMG and 4 for the light machine gun. All of these need 4s to hit. One die rolled onto the floor and it was a 6. My opponent didn't complain so I counted it for a total of 7 hits, a lot of which were 6s. Needing 5s or better to kill I roll a 5 and 4 6s. I remove the 5 deadsmen and change the pin marker to reflect that this one man now has 2 pins. And because most of his squad are now dead he needs to take a morale test. He needs an 8 or less to keep fighting. A 9 is rolled and so he runs away. Oh shit. Germany's turn is next and I figured it might be a smart move to move this infantry squad back into cover behind this grounded railway carriage. It seems as good a place to hide as any. And with that there are no more German order dice this turn. I move the Cromwell forward and pivot him towards the direction of the Panzer III. He's looking to shoot at that in the next turn. I also move the half track forward 2 inches, pivot and then move 5 or 6 inches over to this infantry squad and I move the command team over near the grocery store for reasons. Maybe they've run out of tea and need more. That's the end of turn 3. Let turn 4 commence. I remember to roll for my artillery and I score a 1. That's a miscalculation. The way this is resolved is by moving the aim point 3d6 in a random direction. You can get a random direction like this. Roll an order die. Each order die has a little notch above the order. Your random direction is the direction in which that little notch points. Now we have our direction we roll for distance and I get 10 inches. Move the aiming marker and use the template to see if you've hit anything. In this case it was just a little bit ineffective. Britain goes again and I load these infantry figures into the M5 half track. I put these figures to the side with their order die just to remind myself that they're still in action. Another British turn. At this point they have many more order dice remaining so this is not surprising. The Cromwell's commander must have tunnel vision on that panzer and so he drives up onto the hill without much consideration being given to his visibility. The plan here is obviously to shoot at that panzer 3. I measure the range just to be sure. The roll needed to hit is 4 and I roll a nice 5. To get damage I need a 3 or higher. And there's a 6. On the damage chart I managed to roll a 1. That means in addition to being pinned for hit it gets a tracked marker because it can't make any further actions this turn. 
I also roll for turret jam and I roll a 4 which I believe is a jammed turret. And so that tank is more or less useless at least for the rest of the turn. The Germans aren't out yet though, they can still Hetz. The Hetzer advances up beside the warehouse, maybe not the best of ideas. Britain goes next and that PR team are going to have a go at the Hetzer. These guys are either very brave or stupid, or both. A roll of 5 definitely hits the Hetzer. For damage I have a plus 1 modifier for being at point blank range which negates the penalty for moving. That means I need a 3 or better for damage. And I get a 4. On the vehicle damage chart I roll a 6 and that means the Hetzer has been out hetzed. I should have left it on the table as a wreckage but for some reason I didn't. The PR team finds this quite hilarious and pours for a bit of a chuckle in the doorway. Britain's turn again and this Bren carrier rolls forward and pivots to shoot at the squad of Germans that move to hide from it after watching it mow down their command squad. 8 shots at 4 plus to hit on account of having moved and I score 3 hits. Of those 3 hits only one is lethal. I remove the single casualty and give them a pin marker. Things are looking pretty dismal for the Germans right now. Just to make matters worse, this section of British infantry comes charging over the hill and shoots at the Germans. Or that's what would happen if I were playing a real opponent. I think we can all see what the outcome here is. The British have clearly given the Germans a right good thrashing and so I'll call it there. The remaining German soldiers are taken prisoner and the Panzer III is towed away for testing. The main reason I actually stopped there was because my phone was almost out of storage space and I had very low battery. So I had fun with this but again I have things that need improving. Next time I will bring a small tripod with me so that I have far less shaky handheld footage. The lighting also needs a bit of work. I might also play a game with smaller points value because while this was fun it did actually take quite a long time to play. In the future I hope to have more terrain ready and maybe more figures painted or at least have enough German figures built that I don't need to use Russians. Do you have any suggestions for how I might improve future solo bolt action videos? Or maybe you noticed some rules that I messed up? Or perhaps you just want to see more of this kind of video? Let me know in the comments section below and do share it with anybody who might be interested. The more response this kind of video gets the more likely I'll be to make more of them in the future. Of course don't forget to do things like subscribing here on YouTube and following me on social media. And if you really like what I do you can always help support the channel over at patreon.com slash herbederpaderp. That would be awesome. Check the links in the description for further information. I shall return soon so until then may the dice gods smile upon you and thanks for watching. Farewell.